Well, for the Blues, they racked up their first win of the season and it was an impressive one at that, beating the Giants by 29 points. Jess Hosking was a major part of that, as she always is for Carlton, and she joins me here on the Sporting Capital. Jess, good evening and congratulations. Thank you. How are you going? I'm very good. Nice to sing the song. It's been more than a year. Oh, yeah, look, it's, it's been a long time coming at the moment, but um, it was definitely an emotional one for a lot of the players and we had so many um, players on debut. So, um, yeah, it was definitely very exciting to finally get our first win of the season and sing the song. And it was a big huddle too, wasn't it? Did I even see it? Was our own Andy Marr? Did he even sneak into that huddle as well? (laughs) He definitely is. Or he did. He's um, probably one of the most passionate Carlton supporters and um, one of the most passionate Carlton staff there with us. I can see he's had an impact. There's no question about it. Now, um, it wasn't just the win. It turned out to be your, from a Carlton perspective, your highest ever score in the AFLW. It just seemed, watching it, it just seemed like you're all having a whole bunch of fun out there. Yeah. I mean, we've we've put so much work in and um, we've, we've had a massive preseason. And I guess that win um, was just the reward for effort that we have put in over the preseason and I guess the first two rounds. Held to 16 points in round one. Since then, you followed it up with 44 and then 65 on the weekend. Was was that something that was discussed after round one to maybe try and take the game on a little bit more? Um, yeah, I guess half is um, really driven to us uh, to play open and attacking brand of footy. Um, so I guess coming with that brand of footy, it, it's hopefully going to bring a bit more score um, and I guess a bit more... Um, excitement to the game as well. Do you kind of feel like that's the way that quite a few teams are going? You obviously watch all of the other teams play. Do you feel like that everyone's opening up the game a bit more this season? Yeah, I think across the board, everyone is scoring higher. Um, That's going to come with, I guess, the improvement of skills. And I think that um, the stoppage rule as well has really helped open up the game that um, it's only a free kick. Uh, between the arcs now. So um, it gives more opportunity and players aren't scared to, I guess, have a shot on goal uh, this season either. I wanted to ask you about some of the rules because you're three rounds in now. You've had a chance to adjust to them. The 5-6-5 five, five rule in particular, watching it to me, it, it makes it seem as if the centre clearances are even more important than what they ever have been. Would that be a fair call? Yeah, definitely. I think it, um, it emphasises that players have to stay in their own, I guess for defenders and forwards, they have to stay in their own um, arcs. And then the, it's really up to the mids to kind of get the clearance. And I guess once they do get the clearance, it's then up to the defenders and forwards to maintain possession in the forwards. So um, I think, yeah, definitely it's, it's made it a little bit harder in a sense that there's not so many people around the ball, but it has opened up the game a lot. But it probably suits your game I'm guessing as well you're someone who likes to get physical and take your opponent on -on one-on-one have you found that (laughs) yeah um it's it's been a little (laughs) bit different for me this season so I've swapped to the back line and I'm actually really enjoying it um it's kind of made the game a little bit easier for me because all I have to really worry about is what's in front of me um whereas and I've I've probably pulled up a lot better than I have in the last (laughs) season I'm not as sore so I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. What are you saying? The defenders have got it easy, do they? (laughs) Not necessarily, but I'm definitely pulling up not as sore as I was when I was in midfield. Jess Hosking from the Blues joining me tonight here on the Sporting Capital. Jess, tell us about Maddie Propaska. She came with a lot of hype last year at pick number three in the draft. Watching her on the weekend, three goals, 21 disposals. She's already got a rising star nomination up her sleeve. I think she looks pretty comfortable at the level, don't you? Yeah, she definitely does. Uh, Mads didn't really need to work on too much coming into preseason. Uh, she's a smart footballer and very, very skillful. Uh, she's kind of complemented the rest of our team as well. So she's she's a player that we were looking for in the draft and we were just lucky enough that we were able to get her. Have you found that, I mean, you look at Maddie and you look at, say, Bridie Kennedy from the year before, just to name a couple of your newer teammates, are you finding that as they come in with pathway systems in place that they're they're getting more and more better prepared each year and I, I suppose you think back to your pathway as well yeah definitely I think um with the pathways that there are now and I guess the age group that the girls are starting footy 
um, they're definitely prepped and ready for the physicality of the elite level and um, that a lot of them are a lot more skillful um, just because they have started at a young age. So it's definitely, I guess it's definitely a win for those younger players coming through um, that I guess the older players haven't necessarily had the same pathway. Jess, tell us about Bree Davey. Last year, her injury, I mean, in a year where everything that could have gone wrong for the Blues did actually go wrong. Bree was probably the, the biggest one of the lot. Back out there this year, her presence is there for everyone to see. Tell us what it's like having her back out there now. Uh, oh, I guess for any player, you never want to see them go down, but an ACL injury is probably one of the worst um, injuries any footballer can get. Um, Bree's been incredible in her off season with her dedication to her um, rehab and just the impact she's had on the team while she was out. Um, I think for Bree, she's learned a lot in her off season um, and probably not necessarily things that most players would be able to learn if they weren't injured. So I think that's probably taken another step up on Bree's game and having her back, like her leadership is next to nothing and um, she, she's just an incredible player and an incredible teammate to have. Tell us a little bit about the life of an AFLW player now. We're in the third season uh, and it's evolving all the time. How much time do you spend at the club, I guess, from Monday through to, to Thursday night or, or Friday? Um, oh, I mean, it's, it's tough with work as well. Um, but we would spend probably five hours a night on training nights. So, um, yeah, we're at the moment two to three times a week. And then obviously on other days, we've got other things that we have to complete as well. So we do end up there for at least between 15 to 20 hours a week. And then in between that, we're at work, which I'm also currently at work now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, it, I mean, it's for eight weeks. Um, that we're in the season and it's the sacrifices, I guess, that we have to make for those eight weeks and then the extra couple of months in pre-season. But um, to all of us, it's worth it and um, we kind of just plod along as we do. Do you kind of feel that you're all, you've got this bond in a way because you are all doing the same thing? Some of you working, some of you at uni, but in amongst all of this, you've just got to be good with your time management and make it work. Yeah, I think the fact that we know everyone else is kind of in the same boat in the league that it does make it easier. And if we are having a tough day, we can turn to one of our teammates or other staff that are doing the same thing that we're doing. So um, we do have the support behind us from um, everyone. So it does make it a lot easier. The Cats this week, um, are they a bit of an unknown still? I mean, they one of the two new teams coming in this year. Do you feel like you, you're across them enough at this stage or will that go on over the course of the week? Um, I think we, yeah, we've, we've got a pretty good idea um, of what the Cats are going to bring on the weekend. We did have a pracky match against them just before the season started as well. So um, we did get to see a little bit of them and their style of play. And um, I think we've definitely got players that um, will stand up this game. And yeah, it's definitely going to be an interesting match, <laughs> but hopefully we can get the win on the board. And just before I let you go, now that you have moved away from the peninsula and you've moved up into the city and you, you're part of that crew now, have you got a, a cafe recommendation for us that we should be looking at? You, I think you're over the north side, <laughs> aren't you? Um, we're out in Armadale. Um, nice. So our local go to. Um, we've got a couple, but Street Talk Espresso is one very close to our place. So we get down there a fair bit. Um, but yeah, we, we do have a little bit of a food page going on as well. <laughs> and, um, if you if you want any tips, head over to Hungry Hosco's. <laughs> and just plugging the Instagram on the way out. You know one thing, uh, yeah. you, you'll never have to pay for a coffee after giving the local cafe a plug tonight as well. Hey, Jess, thank you so much for your time. I love the way you go about it and love the way that you play. And from a Carlton perspective, you're fantastic on the weekend. So good luck this Saturday against the Cats. Oh, thank you.